And uh, welcome once again to another edition of the Truth Tower. My name is Johnny Guzman. Welcome on this Monday, July the 2nd, 2012. Tonight's topic, what do the stories really mean? And for that, we've asked, as always, on uh, Monday nights to join us. Uh, the great Santos Bonacci from Australia will be with us in just a few seconds uh, to give us a deeper look, a truthful look at what these stories, Bible stories, children's stories, really mean. Uh, but before we start, I'd like to remind you to uh, send us your invitations to Facebook at QLP Multimedia. And of course, uh, you can find all of our previous programs that we've done here in Quantum Leap Television in our YouTube channel, QL Television. Okay, very good. Let's bring in our good friend, Santos Bonacci. Hi, Santos. Hi, Johnny. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, Santos, well, t tonight's topic, I've, you've done a lot of uh, work on these uh, stories, uh, but I wanted to sort of uh, pick them out individually, right? Uh, what do these, these stories really mean? Uh, stories from the Bible, that many uh, folks take these stories literally, right? Uh, and they don't really understand what these stories are, same as the children's stories. And again, you've done a lot of uh, work on this. But why don't we start with the, the first story of the Bible, Adam and Eve. What is the true meaning behind this story? Which, which by the way, um, before even before I met you, I always thought that there was something wrong with this story because it seemed like uh, the, the woman <laughs> gets the burn on here. You know, God creates first the man, right? But the first one to commit, commit the sin is the woman, right? Then, you know, the woman is, uh, is born out of the man's rib. I mean, you know, last time I checked, I came out of my mom's womb. Mom, you know, I didn't come out of my father's <laughs> rib, you know. Yeah. And, and then they get expelled from, uh, from Eden. But it seems like the, 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 the woman is the one who suffers the most here because, you know, she's going to suffer with these <laughs> horrible pains. And then, you know, she's going to, when she gives birth, and, and the man is just going to, you know, work hard in the field and that's it. So it seems like, you know, it didn't, I, 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 you know, even when I was little, I just didn't understand that story uh, that well. But I know there's another meaning to it. So why don't we start with that, Santos? Adam and Eve. Yeah, well, Adam and Eve is, um, is a story about physics. It teaches how, um, how the creator um, manifests everything, <clears throat> and that is through the atom. Adam is the atom. And Eve, Eve is the multiplication of the atom. You see, Eve represents even numbers. Two, four, six, eight. They are feminine. Odd numbers, beginning with the atom, the unit, the one, uh, is uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. So these are, these are masculine numbers, you see. And that's what the Bible is telling. When, when, when God takes a rib out of atom, so when, when an electron when an electron is taken out of the core of an atom, that's the rib. That's the rib taken out of atom to make a what's called a negative ion. Because when you take an electron from one atom, you make it a positive, and the atom that you give it to becomes a negative ion. You see, so it's it's ionic bonding. Um, in Gematria, this is very, very uh, easy to understand. In Gematria, what Gematria is, the alphabet is also numerolo numerological, you see. So, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, all those letters of the Hebrew alphabet have numbers. One, two, three, four. So, Aleph, which is the atom, that has a, a value of one. Beth is an even, is, is, has the value of two, and that's where your even numbers. So Beth proceeds from Aleph. And Beth is also the word for both, two, even. So you see, one, two, three is the same as A, B, C. Even in, even in the English language, that, that has the same value, you see. So what it's telling you is how it's giving you a lesson of physics. <laughs> it's teaching how atomic, atomic creation begins and how it grows. Uh, 
God, the creator, consciousness, is in the atom. And uh, the Greek philosophers knew this. That's why there's a lot of Egyptian, Greek, Babylonian thinking in the Bible. It's saturated with it. It's, it's, it's the Jews from those cultures, because Jews are not a race. So it's the high priests or the, or the, the thinking minds, the, the, the artistic and the astrological brains behind those cultures that come up with the Jewish legends, the Jewish writings. It's not from a race. Um, and so it's, it's the best of the best. It's the cream of the crop. The Adam and Eve story is one of the best. It, it's one of the, it hides all of the physics that underlies creation. It shows exactly how it takes place. It's got nothing to do with a literal man and a woman. Um, in Kabbalah, Adam Kadmon is the man above, you see, and Adam plain is the man below. So everything in our body is replicated above in the stars. So as we go around, so does, so does the universe do this exactly. We are a little microcosmic model of Adam Kadmon. That's why we are called the Adamic race. We are the children of Adama. <laughs> Adama is a mold. It's a, it's a blueprint, mm -hmm. and we, our bodies, are, uh, uh, pr are produced, uh, uh, are manifested in that particular mold. It's the Adamic mold. That's all it is. Santos, there, was never, there was never one Adam and one Eve. Hey, Santos, what about the serpent and the tree and the apple? What is, that, what is the, uh, the significance in that, in that story? Okay, well, the tree... The tree of life is, is within, and it's the, uh, it's the beautiful nervous system. Uh, all the nerves come from, from the root of the tree, which is in the cranium. And the cranium has 12 cranial nerves, uh, and they're all rooted in, in, the, in, the, in the cerebrum, in the top brain, you see. Now, two of the roots... Uh, come from the Ida and the Pingala, the two, the two nerves which go down the spine and they carry, they carry one carries a negative um, magnetic energy fluid, the other one carries a positive electric fluid and they go all the way down the spinal cord. These are the two serpents you see, because one is negative, it's got a, it's got a bad, it's a, it's a bad serpent, you see. So that's the serpent that is on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Now, that one there is always to the left. The evil serpent is always on the left. The good serpent is always on the right. This is why you always hear people saying, oh, the right side, listen to the right side, and then the monkey's on, on the left, and, 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 or the, de the, the devil is on your left shoulder, and he's always whispering in your left ear, telling you to do the bad thing, but the good angel is always in your right ear. Well, what it's saying is that those two nerves that go up your spine, one of them is negative and magnetic, and it's, it has to do with your left brain. The left brain, if we are too left-brained, we are not balanced at the right brain which is intuitive and is connected to the di directly to the source is chopped off so when this serpent says hey pst, eat eat from my fruit what it's what it what it means is that eve or anyone that eats from the the tree of the left side and is too left brained too too much logic and reason which is good, but it needs to be in balance. It's, it, this is just, as um, Alan Watts calls it, he says, this is focusing with your, um, with your troubleshooting brain. If you, if you uh, uh, um, uh, relate to this brain more than others and, and connect it more than your, your right brain um, and you... Uh, 
you um, – what's the word I'm looking for? There's a um, – See, yeah, that's the word. If you identify with your left brain, your troubleshooter, well, then that's what you are. You are, you know, always this thing going around troubleshooting. You're disconnected from your source. So, so being left-brained is what, what was known in those days as sin because sin comes from the Latin word sinister, left. That's, that's, that's sinister. This is dexter. The two brothers, Pollux and Castor, my sinister hand and my dexter, my right hand. So if you're left-brained, you're sinning. And that's why Eve, Eve was seduced from the Garden of Eden and she died because she detached herself from the source. She went into the left brain and she started – and the left brain is what produces all the, all the technology you see out in the world today, you know, nuclear – bombs, those beautiful machine guns that those young boys are, are killing innocent people in Iraq, Syria, uh, you know, Libya, and all the illegal wars that the uh, United States Corporation have ever fought. They come from the left brain. All those people that are killing, they're all left brain. If they were in their right brain and connected to the source, they would never kill, they would never kill a fly. That's right. That's right. Santos. That's why... Go ahead. I'm That's sorry. why they're sinners. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and I think we've talked about this uh, in, in another show. I think we did it in Spanish, but you know, there was this this notion that uh, back years ago, I mean, like when in my in my mother when she was a child, that if you were a left-handed person, you know, you were considered evil. You know, and they sort of forced you to use your right hand because, again, you know, your right brain, your uh, what, what you're talking about, controls the left side. So I guess left-handed people use more of the right brain you know and i, I was thought, yes. man that was so evil you know why would they force i said I, I would ask my mother she says yeah they would hit us and say that we were evil sinister because we were using our left hand i said like, this yeah. is crazy so let's move on santos now to the the story of uh abraham and elizabeth that's another story that i just couldn't you know I, <laughs> even before i knew any of this stuff i would always argue with my teachers i'm like wait how can god be so mean to ask Abraham to kill his son, his new, his his only son, only child, which by the way he had, a, uh, he couldn't have any children, right? So he tells him go have a child with the maid or something, and uh, he couldn't have a child with Elizabeth, and uh, then he tells him to to kill him, to sacrifice. Him. So I mean, I I never understood that that story, but what is the the meaning behind the Abraham uh, sacrifice of his of his son to show the love? For, for God, Santos? Yeah, good question. Um, before I answer that, I just you mentioned something before this, the Abraham and Isaac uh, um, story. You mentioned the left. You know, this is why Rome, they like us to keep in the right hand. You see, they use the right to kick the football, to open the door, turn the key. You know, everything you do, is right. so it keeps you in the, in the left brain. In Egypt... When you look at images of the pharaoh, you always see the pharaoh with his left foot forward. He never stands with his feet together. His left foot is always forward. In Freemasonry, they always teach that when you start walking, you put your left foot forward first. Why? Because, because it, <coughs> it is the way for you to to initiate right-brained behavior. You see, if you start with your left foot, you're engaging the right brain. So it's, it's, a teaching, it's a teaching device, you see, and if you practice it, these are subtle things that you can practice in your life to get you more right-brained. Now, Abraham and Isaac. Um, Abraham is the son. His, his original name is Abram. Rum. R-A-M is the ram. The ram is in the head, Aries. Just like in Hindu, Brahma comes from Rama. Rama is the most high. And it's the ram, Rama. M, uh, uh, sorry, R-A-M-A -A in Hindu. Same word. So Brahma and Abraham uh, is Aries. 
or in other words, the cerebrum, because everything comes from the cerebrum. It's the father. The son, the son is the cerebellum. So you have the, the, the cerebrum and the cerebellum. That's the son. So this is God and this is Adam. Or this is Abraham and this is Isaac. So, so sacrificing his son, you see the children of Israel are not human beings. They are the blood cells. The children of Israel are warriors. The blood cells are warriors because they build the body. But, but if the children of Israel are fornicators and they get they you know drink alcohol everything like that the blood gets poisoned so the children of israel get led astray by the philistines you know the parasites and all the germs in the body and what have you the weakness um so abraham killing his son has to do with saving his son because the seed that comes from the cerebrum the the creative fluid See, the cerebrospinal system is the first fully developed system in embryology. And it belongs to Aries, to Rama, the ram, or Abraham. So Abraham has a son. He produces this fluid. The fluid, the fluid must go down, down all of these nerves, in particular the... Um, the ida and the pingala, which come from the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, and they must descend down into the sacrum, right? And then, and then they must ascend. They must ascend to go back to the cerebrum. So, and 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 what happens is that beautiful oil, those those be the beautiful seed that comes from the cerebrum, once it does the round and it goes back to the the optic thalamus. It uh, reactivates all the dormant brain cells, and that's Isaac, the son of Abraham, being being saved. You see, and so he can also give birth to the children of Israel. It's all about physiology. It's all within. The Tower of Babel. Another story that just confuses me. <laughs> that you know, how can uh, God be so so mean and 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 to confuse everyone so that you know they. Uh, they, 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 they can't communicate with each other, and all of a sudden, all these languages are born from, uh, from, uh, from this tower. Right? You know, Zachariah Sitchin gives another story, but um, I want to hear what you have to say about the Tower of Babel. Well, the Tower of Babel is any tower that is made like a step pyramid or anything like that, but it's within. Again, it's within. You see, when we descend, from the golden age, the gold is here. The gold is in the cerebrum. And then the silver, the silver age, is the spinal cord because it's a silver fluid. So, and, then, and then bronze and then iron, you know, the other fluids of the body and the blood and everything like that. So when we descend from the cerebrum, from heaven, we lose our consciousness, you see, and we lose the original language. And therefore, we, we are confused with, with other languages or sciences which are confusing which which do not allow us allow us to climb up the tower of babel to reach the heavens to god you see because the story goes that man man seeked to make this tower so that he can go go up to god it's the tower of babel you see but babel means confusion because the people who are building it are confused in other words in other words, we all are. We've all, we've all descended from unconditioned golden consciousness and we descend out of the golden land of the cerebrum. We go down into the land of Canaan. We go down into the land of the Philistines. You see, the, dis the distance between heaven and hell, the bottom of the Tower of Babel and the top of the Tower of Babel is the spinal cord, 18 inches. That's the difference between... If you want to live in hell, you live down here. That's hell. Everything below the heart. The, the three chakras, the three nerve plexuses at the bottom. And you'll, you'll probably notice that many of the towers of Babel always have seven levels. You always see the Tower of Babel usually has about seven levels. Well, because we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> the spinal cord. It has seven nerve ganglions attached to it nerve plexuses 
and these are the 12, the 12, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, did I say 12? Seven, seven plexuses attached to it. The middle one is the heart. The three bottom chakras, that's, that's where all the, the, the Philistines, Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, or Egypt, all of these earthy, worldly cities of renown, they are all below the heart chakra. If you want to go to Jerusalem, yeah, Jerusalem's up here. She's the mother. She's the mother um, in the the heavenly Jerusalem. That's that's the um, the Pia Mater. The Pia Mater is the softest innermost portion of the cerebrum, and and that is enclosed by the Pia Dur the the Dura Mater. Pia, the Dura Mater which is the outer layer of the brain. It's more, it's more hard. And, and in between those two layers is the arachnoid, the curtain. And these also correspond in, in the Temple of Solomon, corresponds with the Holy of Holy. And then there's the curtain. And then there's the Holy outside where the Jews would come into the Temple of God. But no one was allowed into the Holy of Holies. That's the Pia Mata. That's the Jerusalem, our mother above. Hagar, our mother below, that's the, the womb of the woman, that's the solar plexus, that's all this earthy stuff down here, which, which has to do with sex, generation, power, uh, the, the pursuit of wealth, and all of those external things which are attached to left brain thinking, the sinning, sinister brain. So, so, so when God confused the languages, it's not... God, God is the cerebrum. It's not. There's no God out there, mechanical, auto, uh, or, um, uh, authoritarian, patriarchal man God with a beard who sits on his throne and he goes, "Right, I'm going to confuse the languages." There you go, you stupid people trying to build some tower. It, this is it's this is ridiculous. It's like interpreting Alice in Wonderland and and Santa Claus and Humpty Dumpty literally. So. So what it is, is God confuses the languages. It's God. If we drink too much from the cup of inebriation or the cup of forgetfulness, as uh, Porphyry and all those great Neoplatonic philosophers said, we all, even Plato said that we drink from that cup of forgetfulness and we forget our divinity, our God. That's why the languages get confused. It's not about languages. It's about detachment from source and, and, it, and it seems like uh well obviously they know this and this is what is the target right this is the, the main idea to keep us confused you know entertained with so many things and even even in the Zachariah Sitchin's books you know he talks about that you know the 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 earthlings were building these this this tower and you know the gods the Anunnaki destroyed it because they didn't want them to be close to to the knowledge and you know so so that that other group of people get get together and say yeah you know the Anunnaki's destroyed that and yet you're not seeing what that real message is Sodom and Gomorrah, does that lead into that, the destruction of those two si sinful cities, Santos? Yeah, well, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom is the bottom most, the base chakra. When you look at the chakra system, you go all the way down the spine, right at the bottom, that's Sodom, right near the anus aperture, aperture where sodomy occurs. The next one above is Gomorrah. Now, so Gomorrah is the sacral plexus. Gomorrah is also perverted because that's where people, that's the sexual generative chakra. It's connected to the generative organs, the testes and the ovaries. And if you abuse these, you know, in illicit sex, illicit sex is not, you know, when you have sex with uh, any partner. It's sex where you just wantonly waste your semen uh, and, and your fluids. Those fluids are part of your body, and and they are supposed to be retained, and kept. And that's it, that they are golden fluids. They restore the blood. They keep the blood in check. They keep it alkalized, so that the body can function. The temple of God, the temple of Solomon, can function smoothly and perfectly. If you just, even if you, even with your wife. If you're just having, you know, three or four orgasms a day, <laughs> well, then you're just depleting that vital energy. So 
That's what fornication and Gomorrah and Sodom are all about. It's not evil and bad per se. There's nothing evil about sex. But what is evil is the ignorance, the ignorance of sex. You see, the Bible says, my people shall perish because of lack of knowledge. One must know. If you're going to have an orgasm, you're going to, you, you should know, know fully what you're doing. Know that you are depleting your oil source. So you then need to get some minerals and some vitamins and you know, potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, potassium chloride, calcium fluoride, silica, um, sodium chloride. There are, 12, there are 12 of these salts. And I would recommend for anybody who is keen to learn about how to resupply your depleted oils to read this book, Zodiac and the Cell Salts of Salvation. And to watch my video, Your Body is the Holy Land on YouTube, Santos Bonacci, Your Body is the Holy Land, to learn about these 12 salts. And you see, so now you have knowledge. Now you know that, whoops, I've spilt some of my oil. I better go and put some money back in my depleted bank account. Whereas the fornicators, the worldlings out there who have no knowledge of this, that's what they're called. They're called fornicators. Not me calling them fornicators. It's the scriptures. The scriptures call anyone who's ignorant a fornicator because they go around and have this beautiful sex and they don't know what they're doing. They're spilling the seed and they've got no idea. They, they just think, oh, that was a beautiful, quick five-minute sexual experience. Go to the bar, see if I can pick up another girl. Uh, and, and these men, <laughs> brainless idiots, they think they're smart. Oh, I picked up three chicks, took them home last night, had great orgy. You know, and they go and tell their friends and, they, and their friends congratulate them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and these men do not realize the, the harm they are doing to their own bodies. That's what the Bible calls sinning against your own body. Because if you sin against the Lord, it shall be forgiven. If you sin against the Christ, it shall be forgiven. But if you sin against the Holy Spirit, your own body, there's no forgiveness. Because if you empty all that oil, then you die. Right. When, when, you, when the cerebrum mm -hmm. finishes producing all, it only has a certain amount of oil. Right. Samson and, Deli and, 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 and Samson and Delilah, uh, Santos. What does that story tell Sam us? The big, the big guy with the uh, with the with the with the woman, Delilah. What is that story? What's the true meaning behind that story? Okay. Well, Samson is the son. Um, the name tells you it's the son. Shem Shem means the little son, and that's how you say Samson in in Hebrew. Um, the son. You see, Samson kills a lion like Hercules. That's the sun in July. When the sun goes through, the sun goes through the sign of Leo. Every year the sun has to go through those hot months and the sun is victorious as it slays the lion and gives us summer. That's Samson. But Delilah is Virgo. She is the doorway to the darkness. So September is the doorway to the darkness because that's when that's when autumn, September invites the autumn months, you see. So Virgo, she's waiting for Leo. She's waiting for July and then August is when Virgo comes. That's Delilah. And she, and she somewhat, she cuts the rays of the sun with us. Well, you see, Delilah hands, hands over Samson to the Philistines. That's November, Scorpio. Because... The sun is victorious in July, the dog days, you know, glorious summer. But then all of a sudden, there's a fall in the, the sun falls from its glory. And it appears that it's seven, see, Samson had seven braids of hair. Well, the sun has always been known as the seven-rayed God. There are seven rays of light that proceed from the sun. They are the seven colors of the rainbow. That's why Samson has seven braids of hair. Well, the Philistines, they cut those braids of hair. So Samson's got no hair and he wakes up and, he, and all of a sudden he's got no power. Well, because they cut Delilah, um, which is um, Virgo, 
and the Philistines, which is Libra and Scorpio, they also cut the hair of the sun, and then the sun the sun falls, and then on December the twenty first, the sun dies, and that's Samson, and he's got one hand on in 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 the in the temple of the Philistines, he's got his right hand on a pillar, his left hand on a pillar, and he says, "God, he's blind." Because the sun is blinded by Sagittarius. You see the arrow of Sagittarius in December. Um, um, it's because Sagittarius is one-eyed. Remember that. Marcus Manilius, the great astrologer, 2,000 years ago said, Sagittarius with his one eye. Well, see, Sagittarius is down there. And on the 21st of December, the last day of Sagittarius, that's when the sun dies, the shortest day of the year. That's Samson, and he's holding, and he's holding his hands on the pillars, and he says, "I'm going to bring down this temple." Bang! And he brings down the temple. The whole year comes down upon him, and he dies on that one day. But, but you see, but, and, but he was blind. You see, because the sun appears to be blind in winter, the shortest day of the, the year. It's like, oh, what's what a ridiculous orb. Six months ago, it, it was glorious and poncing around in his kingdom in, in July in Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's glorious. And now look at him. He's dead. And so that's the Philistines poking fun at him. The Philistines are saying, Ah, Samson, you've got no hair and you're blind and you've got no power. Come on, where's your power? <laughs> ah, Samson, you look stupid. You, you, you're hairless. That's the sun without its rays in winter, you know, and huh. everybody mocks the sun. These are all our stories of this is it's all astro theology. Right, it, right. it it makes me sometimes it, it tears my heart to shreds to see people going to church to to <laughs> to hear the literal version of these stories. It's just <laughs> it's like, you know, a parent with a three year old child talking about Santa Claus. Santa Claus is coming through that chimney tonight <laughs> and Tomorrow morning, you'll see some prezies underneath the Christmas tree. And the little child is like, wow, okay, I'll go to bed and wait for Santa Claus's presence in the morning. That's what churchgoers are doing. Yeah. You've got 60-year-old, 70, 80, 90-year-old churchgoers that, that read about Samson. And Samson kills 30 men to, t to steal their underwear to give them to his buddies who guessed his riddle. At his wedding night, you see, Samson suggests a riddle. He says, "He says, out of the lion, out of the eater, the honey came forth." Uh, basically, it's talking about the sun when it goes through Cancer and Leo. The honey is in Cancer, and the lion that the sun kills is Leo. So, the honey that, that Samson ate out of the lion. That's the the beautiful honey of of summer and the the ripened the ripened grain, everything ripens in, in July because the sun's rays are directly above. In, in the springtime, the sun's rays are like this in Aries in spring. But in July, the sun's rays are directly above. Therefore, everything is sweetened. All the fruits are sweet in July. So, so, so that's the riddle. And Samson gives his riddle to his 30 friends. And he says, if you guess the riddle, I'll give you 30 pants and they guess the riddle so samson goes off he kills 30 he goes down to ashkelon and he kills 30 um 30 people just to steal their underwear their smelly underwear of course because they were wearing it yeah so yeah so he lines up 30 people from gaza from ashkelon says line up right here i've got a club in my hand i'm just going to kill you i still i need your underwear because i'm i've made a promise so donk 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 he kills them and he brings and churchgoers, they go to church and they think, oh, what a holy man of God Samson was, how he killed those underwear people. He could have gone to the uh, lingerie store and bought some underwear for his, um, for his little boyfriends at his uh, little... Uh, but, I mean, how sick is society? How sick are the priests that teach this bullshit? And, and how... how Childish, these churchgoers that go and, and and insist that it's literal, and they will kill you if you show them the true version of these stories. They're killers. Churchgoers are killers. Right. Anyway, 
uh, Santos, and we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's uh, go into the children's stories, okay? We'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we're back uh, to the Truth Hour. My name is Johnny Guzman. We're talking to Santos Bonacci from Australia, and we're talking about what do the stories really mean. Uh, now let's uh, let's get into the children's stories, Santos. Now, um, Alice in Wonderland. Alice falls down this rabbit hole and goes into another world, and all these crazy things happen to Alice in Wonderland. What does that what What does that story mean, Santos? Uh, again, this is the um, the story of the growth of the individual, the growth of the the soul um, from childish existence through adolescence and into the higher mind. You see, that's what that's that's all we are here for. We are here to um to grow you know we're not here to uh run six or seven businesses and to be the ceo of a corporation um and climb the corporate ladder leave our children at home you know with babysitters and and climb 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 or oh, i've got six suvs and 14 properties oh i've got a lot of stocks on the stock market and then you die with a heart attack that's not what life's all about life is all about inner growth changing your vices into virtues, seeking the good, which is the God. So Alice, um, you know, she gets, she gets deceived by Tweedledee and Tweedledum and the dodo bird and, the, and, and all of these. She gets, she gets suggestions put in front of her, you know, open this door, go down this rabbit hole. And, 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 and you see adults are sort of taking advantage of her gullibility and this is her learning experience as she grows. The same story is Pinocchio. You see, whenever Pinocchio tells a lie, his nose grows, you see. So he learns, learns about lying. And then, of course, was it the fox? The fox that seduced him and said, oh, you don't need to go to school, Pinocchio. Come with me. And then, and then they went and they were turned into swine and everything like that. This is life. This is the story of life. We, we incarnate as human beings, we're very lucky because we obviously have gone through the animal kingdom, we've gone through the vegetable and the mineral because consciousness must taste of the four kingdoms. The human kingdom is the middle kingdom where we become a hero or an angel and return to unconditioned consciousness as gods in, in other more subtle dimensions. But here we are in this dimension and there's all this illusion there are, there are salesmen and priests on every corner. You go to this corner, there's the Anglican church. Over that corner, there's the, the other bullshit church. There's the Jehovah's Witnesses. There's the Mormons. 
um, and they're all saying, "Hey, hey, we've got the right, we've got the right religion, we've got the true Jesus. Come to our church. Don't go to the Mormon one; they'll take you to the devil." It's really happening. It's it's really the way the world works. It's Alice in Wonderland out here, but we are Alice. We are Pinocchio. Are we going to be deceived by the salesman? You know, the salesman's always. You see those salesmen they they want they sell you a good car. Oh, this car's this very, and he knows that the car is a heap of shit. <laughs> you know, but he, he knows it's it's a it's a, a dud. But he'll sell it to you as a good car because they're, they're liars. Salesmen are liars. Priests are liars. They they're telling you to go to their church and go down this rabbit hole. Come on, Alice. And 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 yet the truth is within you. What they should be doing is being more honest, and they should say, "Hey." The Christ is within. Hey, everything you need is within. You've got the goods. You are a unit of God. You are a part of God. You are divine. You are awesome, majestic. You are a loving, produced by love, produced by light. You are light. You are a young star. That's why we call you youngster. No, they don't do that, even, in the, even at school. The teachers are part of the Alice in Wonderland myth because the teachers are teaching left brain crap, all wrong, all designed for you to repeat. You know, learn this, get your grades and repeat it. Bye-bye, go and get a job. That's what this education system is all about. It's education. It's not enlightenment. So rather than the priests and the salesmen and the teachers and, the, and all of these buffoons enlightening people, they're educating them the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And that's what Alice in Wonderland is all about. Yeah, you just reminded me of uh, they're, they're, not, they're just making you uh, a repeater. And they just, uh, whoever can memorize dates and things, <laughs> those are the good students, right? I remember when I was in high school, I mean, I, I can never, I, I, was, I always consider myself a smart dummy. You know, I was always in the, in the lower, because, uh, you know, they, they divide you into four different levels, right? The level one is the, 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 the smarter kids, the kids who can remember things more. And, and the fourth level uh, is, you know, the, the dummy. The guys who got bad grades, and well, I was like, I was in the middle there somewhere. But I, I remember I had one class. Uh, it was science in high school, and I was in the fourth level. I was, in other words, I was with all the dummies. So, <laughs> in this class, um, I, we had a, a teacher who was, you know, at the moment, I, at the time, I didn't realize. I thought he was lazy, but he didn't teach us anything about biology. <laughs> it was, a, it was a biology class. And the other three levels, all the, the they had this one teacher, and they were just running crazy. They had to memorize the, the elements table and all this and that. And what this teacher did was he showed us nature videos. And I was so happy. I mean, and all the kids were so happy. And I, I got an A in that class. All we had to do is just learn about nature, learn about the animals, how they, you know, they worked in their environment. And I was just saying, but... I said to myself, why isn't he teaching the other stuff? But, well, I don't care because it's easy. You know, it was an easy class. But now I realize that this guy had something going on inside and he just moved away from that nonsense. But, you know, but, but it is. It's, it's horrible. That's all they teach you is just to memorize things and to, you know, dates and, and words. And then those are the better students, you know. And Santos, how about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Is the Seven Dwarfs have to do anything with the seven chakras here, Santos? Yeah, yeah. Snow White is the cerebrum or Snow White in the macrocosm is the sun. So the, the cerebrospinal system is the sun and the seven rays. The, seven, the length of the spinal cord is, has got the seven end, uh, nerves on them. So that's the sun, Snow White and the seven dwarfs or the sun. The sun is Snow White. It's as white. It's beautiful white. And when you look at a rainbow, you see the seven colors the seven differentiations and refractions of that light, the seven helpers, the seven dwarves. Um, the, the seven dwarves, <clears throat> they, they each have a talent as well, right? So so almost like it represents each of the chakras, right? Certain, certain things yeah, that, one, they, that they go one on. One is in. grumpy. Uh -huh. One is grumpy. Um, you know, uh, one is happy. One is sneezy. These are all the seven planets. You know, Venus and Jupiter would be the, the two good ones, two happy ones. 
perhaps sneezy and grumpy would be Mars and Saturn because they're always causing trouble. And the moon is also somewhat troublesome. Uh, you know, um, we know that. We know that most crimes are committed on a full moon. You know, the people that keep records, suicides, crimes, all the bad stuff happens right on a full moon. Well, that's because the sun and the moon are opposed to each other. It's, it's a bloody war in heaven. So, so the, seven, the seven planets, they all uh, relate and correspond to the seven dwarves and their characters, whether one be happy or whether one be grumpy. Mm, very good. Now, um, Jack and the Beanstalk, they just came out with a movie, right? Uh, basically, uh, what that is, from what I remember, is that, uh, you know, the, this one guy gets these seeds and he can't get them wet because they just go into this monster tree and they go all the way up to the sky. I mean, this is all exactly what you're saying, right? But but give us your, your, your version, Santos, of, of Jack and the Beanstalk, which is, there's a movie that just came out on that. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, look at look at the look at the names. Just Jack. Jack comes from Jacob. And the beanstalk is a ladder that goes to heaven. Well, look at the Bible. Um, Jacob had a vision of a ladder, and angels were going up and down the ladder. And when he gets up to the to the top of the ladder, and he overcomes uh, struggling with the angel, gets his name changed to Israel. He sees, he sees God face to face. He says, I'm going to call this place Pineal. That's the Pineal gland, where the gold is in the heavens. You see, there's the gold. The golden eggs are all up here. So, so what's happening is this, is that J Jake, uh, Jack and the beanstalk, the beanstalk is the spine. And, and when he goes up, he, he sees the land of the giants and all of this up in heaven, and there's the, the goose that lays the golden egg. That's the gold of the cerebrum. And, and the same as the pineal that Jacob um, mentions in the Bible. But why is it, why is it that it, you can't get them wet, the seeds? The moment that you get them wet, they, they go into this, it, it, they, they explode, and, they, in, and this tree, huge tree, just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Um. Yeah, well, that's, that's, of course, that's the seeds that we've been given, the beautiful seeds down at the sacrum, the bottom of the tree. If we plant them correctly, we are able to climb the beanstalk to the gold and get to the gold. Um, you know, so, um, so Jacob also had, um, he was looking after Laban's sheep, you see, and he was involved with seeds. He was cultivating the ground. He worked seven years for Laban, his father-in-law. And you, if you read the story about Jacob, you'll find that he was planting seeds and he was, doing, he was looking after the flocks, the sheep and the goats, and he was inseminating them. It was, his, his whole purpose is about seeds. Well, that's the whole purpose of Jack and the Beanstalk. It's all about seeds. Those seeds, so the children of Israel are the seeds, the oil, the blood cells, all those beautiful things that we have to refine and, and to save the children of Israel. Mm, very good. Okay, and of course we can't forget the most famous story of them all, Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, Santos, explain to us about Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf and the Grandma. Wh wh what do they all mean, these, these characters? Well, Little Red Riding Hood, the sun is Little Red Riding Hood, and she goes direct. She's always going direct, and she goes, she, she uh, the, or the sun is always rising in the east in the morning, and then when it sets in the west, it turns red, usually. That's Little Red Riding Hood, and, and, and the wolf is the night. The night is always devouring Little Red Riding Hood, and then as the sun goes through the belly, of the earth, the bowels of the earth, the darkness, the night. That's the that's the bowels of the wolf. You see, she's in the bowels. But then but then all of a sudden the huntsman comes along and cuts open the wolf and the sun comes up again. You see? So little red riding hood gets devoured in the west by the wolf, the darkness, in in the stomach of the wolf, and the huntsman is always there in the east. When the sun is born of a new morning, 
And you can apply that to, to um, the year too, summer and winter. Because uh -huh. in summer, Little Red Riding Hood, she's glorious. In, in autumn though, the leaves turn red. And that's, and that's the wolf, the autumn, the red. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood is devoured by the redness and the wolf. And then the winter, and she's in the belly of the wolf all through the winter. And then all of a sudden in the spring, the huntsman of Orion, Orion is the hunter. Mm -hmm. in the sign of Taurus, the bull. The bull is the sign that the sun is back. The bull is the glorious. The, the lamb and the bull, they're in the head, mm -hmm. Aries and Taurus, you see. So when the sun comes up in the head in Aries, and it's the springtime, the blossom, the blossom represents the cell brains, by the way, activating. The brains are activated. And that's, that's the huntsman, Orion. He kills the, he kills the wolf. And then Little Red Riding Hood comes out to see another year. There's, there's, two, there's two ways to understand Little Red Riding Hood. Uh -huh. Santos, but for, for our critics, they would say, well, Johnny, and, and Santos is just making up these things, you know. Um, when do these stories originate? I mean, how, how do you come to these conclusions that the, these are the meanings of these stories? I mean, because these stories of Red Riding Hood and Alice in Wonderland, they're not as ancient as, you know, the story of, uh, uh, in the Bible, obviously. So how do you, um, you, do you, you tie them in with what you're, you've been saying, Santos? Um, well, the stories are as old as the Bible. They all are. They're all the same age. They all come from either folklore or mythology. Folklore is, comes from the, the, the consciousness of the folks, of the people, and whereas mythology comes from the more, learnt, the more schooled approach to to the science. There's two approaches. You've got the folklore and you've got the mythology, mythological. But they're both the same thing. So all the fairy tales are the same as the mythological versions in the Bible. For instance, the Bible is mythology. You see? It's cultured stories. But they all have one origin. And, and the origin is nature. Um, if, you, if you would like a good book to uh, understand all this, um, Fairy Tales, Their Origin and Meaning by John Thackeray Bunce. And in the introduction, he says this. He says, um, he talks about Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, Beauty and the Beast. And then he says, um, they show that all the versions come from the same source and yet with so much difference as to show that none of the versions are directly copied from each other. Indeed, when we compare the myths and legends of one country with another, and of one period with another, we find out how they have come to be so much alike and yet in, in some things so different. We see that there must have been one origin for all these stories and, th and that they must have been invented by one people that this people must have been afterwards divided and that each part or division of it must have brought into its new home the legends once common to them all and must have shaped and altered these according to the kind of places in which they come to live. Those of the north being sterner and more terrible. Those of the south softer and fuller. But anyway, the, the reason I'm writing, it's, it's great to read this. He, he talks about the one origin, which is basically um, the Aryan people of, uh, of years gone by, you see. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was this cohesive oneness of thought before empire came along and divided all the kingdoms up and confused them all. And Rome is the, uh, the seventh empire that has done this and continues to do this. Santos, um, just to, to um, end uh, now the, the, this, uh, the show, I just wanted to um, remind you that, remember that we did a, a program in English and in Spanish on uh, the 7th of July. We're just a few days from the 7th of July. Um, have you, uh, have anything that you've come across that indicates that something may be going on in the United States around that time? Remember, we did an astrological chart for the U.S. Uh, for the 7th. I also did one in numerology and, uh, and, and for the tarot. 
and they all coincided in everything that you said and you know they, they all coincided as well in in the morality and, and in the tarot cards um th th can you share anything with us about that date or or i don't know i don't i don't really have uh, anything new to add to that but um tomorrow is apohelion day today and tomorrow which means the sun and the earth are furthest away from each other in their elliptical orbit and there is a full moon so remember the sun is over here the moon will be opposite so there's this big opposition happening right now as we speak um, uh, but but th uh, three days after this there's a massive alignment Pluto in Capricorn Uranus in Aries the Sun in Cancer Mars is now entering Libra where Saturn is and these are all the cardinal signs this is a cardinal cross or a, or a cardinal it's a m magnificent the only planet that is out of this that is one of the big ones is Neptune all the rest Pluto Mars Saturn the Sun uh, and Uranus they are all the big boys and they are all opposed to each other it's like two of them the Sun will be here Pluto will be here Aries will be here uh, Uranus will be here in Aries and Saturn and Mars will be down here Neptune is over here in Pisces just uh, sorry um, next to um, next to Uranus is Neptune in Pisces so it's pretty much close to Uranus but 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 those are all the four big boys, the bad boys, and they are all squaring off in three or four days' time. The, I can't stress enough how powerful that's going to be. I imagine there will be an earthquake or two. There will be a, a volcano or something. There will be um, there will be powerful, powerful uh, energies on the secular plane. I'm suggesting that something is going to just collapse and end. What it will be, I don't know. Banking, money, some fiction, some illusion is going to end. It's going to snap on that day. There's, there's some big, big things coming for the 7th of July. Um, it may not be the 7th. It may be the 8th or the 9th. Uh -huh. It may be tomorrow. But uh -huh. from now on, from today till about the 8th or the 9th of, of July... Man, that, this, this alignment is, is one of the, the strongest alignments in history. And you will see that it will, bring, it will bring its fruits and its rewards and its consequences. Mm -hmm. What yeah, they um, are, I'm not sure. But, the, um, well, we'll, right we'll now in, in the United States, they're, they're having a few states are in a state of emergency because of uh, these strong winds that they've, they've knocked out electricity uh, all over the place. And, um, well, let's, let's, let's hope that, that it's not... So tragic for for the U.S. No, as far as damaging, let's hope, uh, mm -hmm. and killing people. But anyway, Santos, thank you very much. It's been a great hour. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, this information about the stories, and um, you have yourself a good night. Well, a good day for you because it's it's in the daytime. <laughs> exactly. Okay, we'll talk. Thank you, Santos. Thank you. Well, uh, that's going to do it for us, uh, folks. Uh, thank you for being here with us another hour here in the Truth Hour. Just a quick reminder to send us your invitations to Facebook, QLPMultimedia.com, and uh, check out all our previous shows in YouTube at QL Television. You have yourself a good night. We'll see you tomorrow for the Truth Hour in Spanish. La Hora de la Verdad. Maybe you guys should tune in, uh, some of you speak uh, English-speaking folks, to learn a little Spanish. It's always good to learn other languages. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Ciao. Oh,